Hello, I pray that your Wednesday was filled with spaces and places of joy, of peace, of happiness, that you found something that made you smile. I'm here at the beach. It's a little windy because it rained a little bit, which is very unusual for this part of South Africa. But anyway, I want to tell you about my Uber ride. So I called an Uber and where I live, it's a very big apartment complex. It's got 20 something floors, but the only entrance is all the way at the end. So when I came out, I saw the Uber, but he was like maybe, he was nowhere near the entrance. So I stood where he could see me and the car didn't move. So I didn't move, I just waited. Cause there's no way he could have got out of the complex without driving past me. So I figured I would just wait. So eventually he drove up and identified myself and um, I'm trying to wait for this truck to go by. I identified myself and I got in and we didn't move. And I didn't know what to do. We just, he, we just sat there. So I had put on my seatbelt. I wasn't clear why we didn't move. And then he finally said to me, you by yourself? So I said, yes. And then we began to move. So to kind of, you know, break a little of the tension, I said to him, are you having a good day? He said, no. And then he mumbled something, but I wasn't sure what the mumbling was about. Then he asked me, where are you going? Well, I decided not to respond because I had put it in the Uber app. And so he started driving and then he kept grimacing. And I realized, I was like, are, is the GPS taking you in a direction that you don't agree with? And he mumbled some more. And so I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm not gonna keep trying to talk to this Uber driver. I'm gonna be quiet and just look at the scenery. And all of a sudden, a little bit later, he says to me, where are you from? And I said, the US. And I decided to say, where are you from? And he said, Rwanda. And so I said, oh, I've heard that your country's really pretty. He said, no, it's not. And I said, oh, he said, we've been fighting. There's wars been going on. So I said, oh, that's really unfortunate. And then I said to him, I didn't say anything. And then he offers, I haven't been home in three years. I've only been home three times in 13 years. So I still didn't say anything. And then he said, and this is the point that kind of stopped me in my tracks. He said, I lost my whole family to genocide. And I guess what, what I'm trying to say in this video, you never know what people are dealing with. You never know what their circumstances are. You never know why they may appear to be perpetually in a bad mood, but they may have some reasons about it. I'm assuming this man is grieving. I'm assuming this man may still be angry. I did ask him, I said, are there many people here in the Rwandan community here? And he said, no, maybe one or two. I said, so I guess you must mix your culture. And he finally stopped grimacing. He did, he said, yes. And, and so, I guess my message to you is sometimes when people kind of come off with an attitude or come off a little snide or a little rude and you know you haven't done anything, maybe that's an opportunity to extend them a little grace because again, we don't know people's stories. We don't know what they've been through. And if I do that to you, please offer me some grace. Charge it to my head and not to my heart. Love you all and... Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.